not broadcasting um and then we can do something about it all right okay cool well welcome everyone now that we uh finished the technical setup i wanted to just briefly introduce the group and the vbout community so we're about twenty thousand members strong outside of the vbout user base these are meetups that we've grown over seven years we meet every month we skipped probably just a few months, so we've been very consistent. I will bring over the best on the latest topic in marketing. So we'd like to teach you recent updates, email marketing, lead generation, marketing automation. So everything in terms of your marketing automation stack is uh, are the topics that we cover. Sometimes we go outside to talk about how to create an awesome customer experience, which was our last event, and it was an amazing event. And we keep on bringing new topics. We meet once a month. We usually do it on the second Wednesday of every month. And when before we used to do it physically in New York City, now we moved it online. So our reach is way beyond a physical local location. Now, what does this mean in terms of the Meetup community? You guys can tap into the Meetup community to, again, broadcast a release of your startup. If you're looking for an opportunity because you're looking for a job or if you're looking to hire, Meetup is a great platform for you. Okay, feel free to leverage it by using their board, by commenting on events like this. So the signups uh, to the events will get notified. The agenda for today is going to be about 10, 15 minutes general intros, usually shorter. We'll dive into our topic. I think we're going to need a solid 40 minutes for it. And uh, we'll have a quick kind of uh, segue on how you can measure email marketing with VBout. And finally, we have Q&As and introductions. We're going to be needing 6 to 6.15. So if you have a little bit extra above the hour, please stick with us. But before we get started, leave your information in the chat, your LinkedIn, business, email. We usually syndicate it back to everybody so you can see the transcript included in the email follow-on. In case you want to connect with somebody you missed or you have somebody in the community that could be uh, meaningful in terms of uh, connecting with another startup, connecting with a talent, and so on. I want to tell you a little bit about VBout, which is our startup. We sponsor these, so I want to just give it a few minutes of your time. If you don't know what VBout is, we are a marketing automation stack. We've done really well over the past few years to secure our way as a middle stack, and I'll show you what that means. But what, we, what sets us apart from the other stacks like MailChimp or HubSpot is that we have a simple interface, we have great price, and we give you premium support from real people. The combination of these that you get with us is really hands down what people have been raving about. And I would love for you to try V about to see how this can impact your business. In terms of the core of the stack, what does it include? It includes a landing page builder, forms, pop-ups. So these are all the top of the funnel stuff. Then once you capture those leads, we can track them, automate the sequences to nurture them, uh, launch email campaigns, like a newsletter type campaigns. And then for retention, we have social media publishing, retargeting, and a lot more. So we encompass about 12 different tools and we integrate very well with other platforms. So if you're looking for API connectors, Zapier, Pabli Connect, or any others, we have a very robust integration layer, which helps you connect VBout to your third party platforms. This is just a quick overview. I won't bore you with demos, but to show you the visual experience in VBout, this is one of our tools, which is automation. If you're crafting a sequence, let's say an e-commerce abandoned uh, follow-on, you can just drag and drop it with your team, no need to know any code, and you can build sequences just like this. You can add filters, you can do branching. We talk in depth about this in our courses and our content, so I highly advise you, if you haven't taken any, to actually um, visit our course. And George will be leaving a link in the chat section. George, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Awesome. Please leave a link for everybody to access our 
lead generation and marketing automation masterclass. We're going to give you coupon code so you won't have to pay $3,000 for it because you attended this meeting. You are looking to improve your email marketing and you've taken the time investment to be here. So we'll give you access to the course and we'd love to hear your feedback once you've taken it. So George will be leaving a code you can use on the checkout to access that lead gen and must, uh, marketing automation course. <clears throat> Another thing that we really preach is you owning your first party cookie. What does that mean in terms of privacy and especially the topic we're discussing today is that once you send your emails, your SMS, web push, you install our tracker, you, you have your entire ecosystem in one place like Vivout, you can see in depth how your con uh, contacts are performing. And that could be translated in the future in terms of like better retargeting. You own this data instead of Google or Facebook owning it and you have to pay them to give you an audience of your choice. So we highly advise you to consolidate tools and use things like Viva because we can empower your first party cookie and having you own it. Again, to summarize what I just said, Vbout is a middle stack. So if you see on the left, these are all the platforms out there like MailChimp and they're all great platforms. We call them a little bit of an underkills of the marketing stack because they leave a lot to be desired. And I'm focusing on the marketing stack, not sales, no CRMs or anything like that. And then you have the overkills like HubSpot, Marketo, ShopSpring. These are very good products as well, but they could be pricey, difficult to set up and a huge investment. So we are right there in the middle between the underkills and the overkills. All right, this is it in terms of uh, the introductions. I think we are doing good on time. Again, if you just joined us, please leave in the chat your information, your name, company, email, LinkedIn, and anything you wanna share, okay, if you're looking for hire, because we're gonna take this transcript and we're gonna syndicate it over to everybody else so they could probably uh, reply to you if you have a request. All right, George, are we doing okay on the audio? Everything is good? Yes, Richard, everything is good. And the live stream is going on on the group and uh, on the page, right? Yeah, uh, all good, don't worry. Perfect. All right, so let's talk about Apple's new mail privacy protection how it's going to impact your email marketing game, what you should do about it, a little bit of a background on why it happened. So I want to make this an open uh, conver uh, kind of roundtable conversation. I'll be pausing at a given point to take some questions, depending on the sections that I cover uh, with that particular structure. <clears throat> so what is mail privacy protection, also known as MPP? If you haven't heard about it, it's the policy that uh, stops email senders from gathering critical information about the recipients. Usually when we send out an email, we drop in an, a, a tracking pixel that allows us to determine when somebody opens an email, how long they've opened the email and so on. So the goal here or what Apple's trying to do is to block that particular tracking pixel from gathering data on, uh, on users. As mentioned, the data will be blocked. And it means that tracking pixel, which is usually one by one, it requires an image not to be blocked for us to detect it, is going to be not blocked, but probably just become obsolete because they're gonna trigger it in the background. That means you're gonna have a false open rate uh, from Apple's side. This update will um, impact all subscribers using Apple Mail, which is a huge chunk of uh, the world, which I'll show you in a second, a uh, little bit on that. Um, so in terms of how the world is structured right now from uh, open rates and email clients uh, in the world, you have 35%, as you can see them right here, Apple iPhone has a big share of the market. So it's no joke to take this seriously. This is a source from Litmus. And you'll see that this could have an, a huge impact on your business in terms of how much of those open rates and metrics are not going to be accurate once that release is live, okay? 
So when is it expected to launch? They said on the Apple side between September and November 21st. Um, they don't give an exact date unless something changed since we did this presentation. But that means it's extremely close. And we probably should be thinking about start being proactive on, um, on how to deal with it. The way this is going to pan out from our initial research that we've done, and we, I want to kind of uh, uh, give credits to Ryan Jones here, which we have a link to. Uh, it's going to be a prompt which is turned on by default that says protect mail activity. That means the IP, is, the IP of the open or whoever's opening is going to be obscurated. They're not going to allow you to see uh, their information and even uh, blocking the email client to some extent. So there's going to be an option for that. And if you opt in for it, which I believe is going to be the default, then obviously this is going to impact uh, that particular contact. Now, I'm saying most of these things, guys, with not 100% certainty in terms of how the usability is going to work on Apple side because it's too early, but expect something similar to this. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk a little bit about how it's going to work. Apple is going to be taking the tracking pixel. I said nulling or blocking. In fact, what they're going to be doing if you activate that option is that immediately upon sending an email to someone, that it's going to cache that email by opening and displaying the images as well as uh, that tracking pixel, which is one way to increase the speed of uh, user experience. And I'm sorry, guys, I hear a little feedback here. George, uh, also mind, mind just muting on that tech, please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, no, no, no questions for now, but uh, sharing the LinkedIn profiles. All right, cool. So the way this is going to work, guys, when we send out an email, any technology out there, VBout, MailChimp, HubSpot, or anything you might be using, they drop in a, an image pixel. The moment that image pixel has been called from the website, we consider that an open rate. Okay, that pixel is going to be displayed by default in the background, even if the user or the contact does not open that email, which means it's going to clock in an open rate. That doesn't only apply to that pixel, but also the rest of the images within the email. So you've embedded your content and it looks awesome, or even maybe you have some dynamic content showing for certain users. This is going to be very tricky and we're going to discuss this, but those images will be open and cached in the background. Okay. Another thing is that they're going to mask the inbox IP address. So you cannot tell the geolocation of the inbox where the contact is opening. Uh, the, the actual details on their email client and what they're using is also going to be blocked. And they're also going to give an option for you to completely um, hide your email address and replace it with an anonymous address that Apple will give you. This might be an additional option, but what that means is you might have just a whole bunch of addresses which are not the exact email of that particular contact, okay? So the open rates are not going to be accurate. And you, know, you cannot tell if Jimmy or John or uh, Jane have opened or interacted with your email. So what that means in terms of engagement, I'll dive deeper into this in a second. And uh, as well as, as I said, the location will be blocked. So why do we use open rates to begin with? For those of you who don't know, uh, we actually find out what is the ratio of deliverability. So everybody measures their, everyone measures their email performance by open rates. So if your open rate is 15% to 20%, this is industry average. If it's below 8%, there's something wrong with your list. If it's above 20%, you're doing great. And if you have direct list of clients and you're doing updates, it might get all the way up to between 50 and 70%. Now, most people open and do not click. So when that takes place, obviously you cannot tell anymore that your emails are performing well. We use open rates to target 
uh, or to segment our contacts better, those who are opening emails and reading our content, we consider them an active email subscriber. And there's a whole kind of protocol to taking inactive subscribers, turning them into active and so on. So segmentation is really, really important when it comes to open rates, right? And this, this will also be heavily impacted. <clears throat> Another thing we use open rates for um, is to determine the most efficient days and times of sending emails. So if we average out the open rates to be the best at noon, now it's not gonna get, get apply anymore. Uh, it's not gonna work anymore. And that data is gonna get skewed a little bit. So in Viva, we've been working on machine learning to determine the best time to send out emails. And now we have to kind of tweak this around because that's not gonna be accurate, okay? Very, very important because these machine learning and AI tools that are out there in email particularly rely heavily on open rates. Finally, we can build automations and nurture subscribers according to open rates. So there's a whole world of automation as well that when somebody opens an email, assign this lead to agent one, let's say, or um, you know, sales success managers A. If somebody opens an email or do not open an email, send them a follow-on email. That world is gonna to have to be reconfigured based on this update. So it's really, really important to kind of look or revalue, evaluate your automations. Because if you have built those conditions, you have to <laughs> rebuild them or rely on a different metric, which we'll also discuss in a second. All right, I'm gonna take a quick pause here. Does anyone have questions in terms of what, what is the mail protection, mail, mail privacy protection? What, what is it going to impact and why we use open race to begin with? I can uh, just maybe open the floor for a couple of minutes. Any questions, George? You guys can leave questions no, in the chat, fine. by the way, yeah. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Yolanda. Um, we have a question from Greg. Will Gmail follow suit? most likely at some point. Um, don't forget Gmail advertises heavily in email. So if they're gonna do it or not, that's something slightly different. Um, uh, I mean, tricky, sorry. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure they're gonna follow at some point. There is a battle here between Facebook, Google, and, um, and Apple in terms of privacy and how it's impacting their entire ad network. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. I, I, I would say yes. <laughs> okay. If you guys know anything else that here that it could impact, please leave it in the chat. I would love to add to this list. If you have some other things that could be impacted beyond segmentation, determining best time for open rates, uh, your automations are going to have to be configured and also doing proper measuring of... Uh, you know, your campaign performance. <clears throat> yeah, Richard, we have also a question from Peter. Uh, do you want to read it or are you just going? Yeah, I can, uh, I can open the I chat. Can speak, uh, I can speak about it. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, Peter. Sure. Yeah, so I've been noticing, and I, I think Vbot has the same technology, like when you're sending emails and you're tracking, you know, you check off track this email, that like immediately after it's sent, it says, oh, this email is open, like within the same second. And I'm, I'd love to know or your feedback, like what's doing that? Like if the pixel uh, wasn't blocked, but sent back that it was opened. I think this is gonna depend on um, what the user or the contact you're sending to is using for their email. Sometimes the contact is uh, using a local browser, maybe Firebird, that's triggering that, and they have some configuration that does it. Um, others have servers with configuration as well that scans the emails for links. They actually click on the link. We, we've seen some patterns as well with highly secure servers where even the links are showing clicks immediately because they're trying to scan if the destination is a phishing site or spoofing or anything like that. So there, there are some tools out there. I think it constitutes about 5% of the data. 
um, and sometimes a lot less as well, depending on the size of your list and the quality of your list. But this is, uh, from what we know, that's the reason, um, uh, Peter. Cool. All right, if no more questions, we can uh, go ahead and talk a little bit about the background. Why did Apple do this? Obviously, Apple has been focusing a lot about on privacy and how can the, the, uh, their customer base take control over their data, right? Um, so overall, this is one of their initiatives and efforts to allow their Apple uh, users and I don't like the word user, but I, I always, <laughs> I use it a lot. Uh, they, they want you to take control uh, over your data. Not to mention a few months ago, they killed the third party cookie and that had a huge impact on the ad world, but still things are running and we're, get, we're still getting retargeted one way or another. Um, so this is part of the bigger picture and Apple's strategy on branding themselves at, as one of the products out there that focuses on um, you know, taking control of data. And finally, they express that email tracking pixel uh, through their conversations and forums. Email tracking pixel is considered somehow invasive to the user experience because it's tracking things the user haven't given consent for. So instead of regulating it, which would be extremely hard, they just decided to completely um, take care of it by caching it and, and uh, making it obsolete. <clears throat> so this is more of a wake up call for marketers. Maybe now it's time to rethink a little bit, open rates and focus on other metrics. Um, and we have follow on slides on this, but every marketing platform gives you a lot of granularity on, uh, on the performance of your campaign. This is not a snapshot from VBOT. So your clicks, your bounces, your unsubscribes, complaints, and conversions. These are other metrics you can rely on now that open rates will probably not be as accurate as you expect it to be. Also, you should think omni-channel because email is just one channel. And I know most of you are relying on email 100% to communicate with clients, but you can certainly deploy things like SMS if done properly with the right consent, web push notifications. You can deploy chat and chat communication and even have your Facebook a chat widget, if this is a channel you'd like to activate. Um, this way you are kind of rounding your contacts with the with different ways or different channels to drive conversations. All right, let's talk a little bit about how well uh, the mail privacy will impact your email marketing. Uh, and I think we have, a question from Tim, will Apple still allow click-through tracking? Uh, I think click-through click -through tracking will still be active. Again, if things change from now until they launch it, I'm not sure, Tim. Uh, but clicks are simply when you click on it, you're redirected to URL and we track who, who clicked it. Um, yeah. And if exactly. this is not accurate, guys, please let, let us know. I'm very open for anyone on this call to uh, chime in and add uh, more more information. Yeah, I think from all the resources that uh, we've gone through, the only metric that will be impacted is the open rate. Uh, I I never seen any other metric like CTR or uh, unsubscribe, for example. Hopefully, fingers crossed. One one, one chaos at a time. Um, so it's going to have a lot of impact on your email marketing strategy. One of them is your performance metrics. So now then when you're taking your, your uh, reports to your stakeholders at the company or maybe your clients, if you're an agency, or perhaps you're just doing it for yourself, your performance metrics are not going to be accurate. So you have to reconfigure or rethink what you're looking at, like I showed you in the slide before. Your list segmentation, list hygiene strategies. We always advise people to actually segment their list between those who never opened emails and target them less frequently versus those who are engaging in opening. Because sending emails constantly to those who are not opening is actually a bad sending habit. So now 
that kind of list hygiene and list maintenance can have to change it a little bit. And I'll, I'll ask you guys for some ideas on that. <clears throat> so your list hygienes have to properly change. So instead of maybe saying those who never opened emails in the past six months, maybe those who never clicked on the link inside an email, we can suppress them or we can put them in a list that's only targeted once, once a quarter or something like that. Send time, send time optimization will have to change as I discussed. And finally, the live content inside your email is going to be slightly difficult to, um, to display or to conditionally uh, show images based on uh, the, the user type or open engagement. <clears throat> In terms of the metrics, the marketers won't be able to distinguish real opens from false because those opens are cached by the iOS mail app. Um, and they're going to preload images, even when you're not viewing. I know this is a repeat for those who just joined. So your open rates for your segment that's using the Gmail, uh, sorry, they're using iOS, uh, is not going to be 100% uh, accurate. And I'll give you guys the actual versions of Apple that's going to be doing this. Um, please bear with me here. I believe it's only going to impact a couple of... Uh, okay, so it's going to be iOS 15, iPad OS 15, and Mac OS Monterey, as well as the Watch OS 8. So these are the devices or the operating systems that are going to be impacted by this. <clears throat> All right, so uh, list segmentation, list hygiene. When we are creating those segments inside our systems to, let's say, create a, a list of those who opened emails in the past, assign them to one of our success managers to do follow-ons, or even segment them to upload them to a, an AdWords campaign or retargeting on Facebook. Um, this is going to be blocked. So we have to probably, we have to avoid things like uh, this list is open. Let's send them an email follow on saying, hey, I've noticed that you opened the email in the past. Or you haven't opened. You know, this is a follow on on our previous conversation. So your strategy have to change. Um, and instead of opening, you know, relying on the durability um, and relying on open rates, you probably have to do some other fallbacks like a very clear CTA that takes them to a page and they need to take certain action on that page. Okay, so these are some ideas that we're contemplating in VBout, and uh, we'll have some further slides on that. By the way, any questions, George, so far? Sorry, I have a couple of screens, but I have things open. Uh, no, nothing uh, for now. So I'm monitoring uh, also Facebook. Not... All right, thank you. All right, so what kind of metrics we can look at? Uh, Click-throughs, okay. Conversions, so when somebody clicks on your site, you can set up your conversion pixels on your website, maybe visiting a specific page, um, or perhaps completing a, completing a purchase on your e-commerce website. These are things you can actually track and make them the core or the center of your uh, list segmentation and list hygiene. Obviously, and V about what we do in bounce rates and subscribes, we handle them automatically. Uh, this will not change. Also, you might want to use SMS for doing some validation um, on, on certain things. So you can think about when somebody signs up, if you can today find out if they are using, because this didn't take effect yet. So if you set that an email and you know who is your, um, who of your contacts are using iOS, perhaps put them in their own bucket and perhaps email them separately when, once that release is out. <clears throat> um, all right, so th this is also, you know, one of the conversations we've been having. Um, instead of relying on open rates, um, you know, just, just for uh, open rates, I'm sorry, from one segment, which is the iOS, just average it out across the board. So have an iOS 
Gmail, Outlook, and others. Sometimes it's hard to kind of differentiate if you have a, a non or non-branded Gmail contact. Uh, maybe you can just average out everything and or leave out that segment which is which is using iOS. But it's going to be perhaps a big chunk of your contacts. <clears throat> Now, in terms of send time optimization, it relies heavily on open rates because it learns in terms of our machine learning process in VBout, we try to learn in real time when is the best time to send out an email across the board and across specific account. Okay, these are all internal uh, programs that we've built. So now these have to be reconfigured because we cannot say open rates on iOS or non-IOS are, are different because this takes a whole average. Um, also historical data and, and other models will need to be introduced in terms of machine learning. So that's something that we are aware of. And if you are working with a company that provides suggestions on open rates, uh, a best time to send, sorry, I would say, ask them this question. Uh, how is this gonna impact your algorithm? Do we have to pause this and default back on our own time preference? <clears throat> now, in terms of live content and email, um, there are different kind of dynamic content that you can plug in emails. I'm not talking about the AMP, the accelerated mobile pages for email. I'm talking more about things like when you segment your contacts, and those that open, maybe you send them a follow on email with an image embedded. Obviously, this dynamic content will not be as efficient. Maybe you have countdowns in your email as well. Uh, these countdowns are going to be blocked. So that content is might be essential if you're running an offer or something that's about to expire. And as I mentioned, your images might be broken if you have some dynamic content. I'm not sure if they're going to be blocking animated GIFs. George, if you have any feedback or anybody, if animated GIFs will be impacted, I haven't been able to find anything on that. Hopefully not. Uh, but I think some of those, anim some of those um, countdowns and dynamic content uh, in terms of images are going to be heavily impacted. Yeah, of course. Right, quick pause here, guys. Any questions? I think we're doing good on time as well for an open conversation at the end. No questions? Awesome. Cool. All right. So, in terms of All good. Uh, you know, how to determine the percentage, um, I'm sorry, we got a question from Peter. No, Dynamic. Dynamic content does not use JavaScript. If you are using dynamic content like countdowns, it's usually an animated GIF that gets generated in the background. But there are some animated GIFs um, from the moment that oh, you open the email, the countdown starts, right? Um, th that's one that's going to be impacted. Um, also, if you have a system that's being built or, or an automation that was those who open emails then send them follow on emails with these banners. So that part of segmentation will also not work properly. JavaScript as of today is not supported in email. They will strip it out. It will not display properly. And, pro and most likely it's going to make your email break somewhere. Okay. All right. So uh, I was mentioning that what you can do in terms of uh, your segmentation strategy, do it today before this takes effect. Create a segment of your lists or, or your contact database who is using an Apple or, or an iPhone. So George, this is something we definitely are working on as well. Um, at VBOT, we have a filter that says, you know, if their iOS is this or that. So definitely uh, be on the lookout for this. Create a segment for those using iOS so you can treat them in the future. At least you'll have a starting point with um, some accuracy or less degree of uh, errors when it comes to the open rates. Yeah. 
just to find out uh, in the future when when the open rate is blocked or uh, as you mentioned the the greater the percentage of these people so the higher the, the, high, the higher the impact absolutely absolutely <clears throat> All right, um, so let's talk about how dependent is your email on your real-time content. I would love to hear from anybody here uh, who is using dynamic content that's either a countdown that's being triggered once somebody opens a previous email um, or perhaps some conditional content based on other metrics and segmentation. Webinar signups, okay, Peter, cool. All right, so I think once the content is cached, and I'm, I'm saying again, guys, I'm not sure of the user experience. This is all our previous uh, current research, but um, that content will become static. Okay, so you, you, you might not be rotating anymore. And the moment that this release is out, uh, I highly advise you to test it before you continue sending your with your countdowns in it. Um, and obviously, you know, people use these things for, you know, triggering urgency in emails, uh, getting people to take action, uh, or perhaps having expiry dates on some links and pages. You might need to uh, stop this for a while, unless you want to do an action and the action, uh, when you click it, it takes you to a landing page that includes that countdown uh, on it. All right, you can A-B test your campaigns um, to see if one would count down one of another to see the, the behavior. Maybe your countdown is not uh, kind of dynamic. It's not going back in time, which is like a counting backwards. It could be just a static uh, countdown. Um, because don't forget, there's a big chunk of people who are not using Apple as well. So um, you can A-B test if you are uh, unsure and see how that pans out. And as I mentioned, not everybody's going to be on iOS. So you have to take into consideration those who are using different email clients as well. Uh, Richard, uh, Bernard is asking if we're making any structural changes within Debug regarding the changes discussed. We are, we are talking about a few options. And it's really hard to actually come up with an architecture for this until it's launched because we don't know how it's going to work. We might be introducing some sort of a, a primary check um, because we won't be able to track iOS from non-iOS after the launch is done. We can do it today and put them in their own bucket and build a data model just for them. Uh, but moving forward, it's not get, going to be the answer for it. And it's really hard to, to see what, what is the pattern that's going to be shown once this is live, right? Maybe they're going to be using a specific uh, block that we can determine. And when we determine that's a block, we can say we can create a new status for those uh, that are we are uncertain, right? So if we send an email at 12.55 and the open is 12.55, and there's a, th a third and a fourth pattern, which could be uh, an, an IP address that uh, we cannot read and an iOS that we cannot decipher, then I think these metrics might be grouped together in their own status. Um, we, we can call them you know, projected open rates or something like that. So we haven't really come up with it because again, we are waiting for the release, but we have some ideas that we're discussing internally. Does this help, Bernard? That's a great question. <clears throat> okay. Uh, all right, so reconsidering your KPIs, guys. In terms of VBOT, we have what we call the read pixel. This is not going to be accurate anymore at all. It's already having its own issues because people are using things like Peter said that opens the email automatically on your behalf. So far, it's been a very small percentage. So the email engagement, which by the way, the moment that you open an email, it starts counting how long you've been 
reading the email and the moment you shut down or you move from to another uh, inbox, then we stop that countdown. We call this the email engagement. And this is not going to be accurate. We might even retire it if we see that the data is at a higher percentage than 10%, because then this might not be accurate. We'll have to decide on that. <laughs> so I think we're going to be focusing a lot on what we call the clicks, the also conversions on the site, because in VBOT, we, we let you create what we call conversion tracking pixel. We can plug it on your site, and we can even pair it with the our tracking code that we have on your site when people visit through an email. Um, and I also really think using UTMs is going to be one great solution, the, probably the easiest solution. So you can create some dynamic segmentation based on UTM tagging for your email links, okay? Uh, you can, if you're sending an email, let's say in September, you can say UTM campaign or UTM content, September 10th or whatever. And then we can rely on UTMs to some extent by doing minimal um, tweaks to the technology itself because UTM, UTMs are already tracked. <clears throat> um, all right, and obviously you cannot take, once this is released and you're presenting your data to your clients or your stakeholders, it's gonna be really tough to measure success of campaigns based on, uh, based on open race because you know, raise of hand here or just say yes in the chat if you are currently using open rates as your number one metric for gauging email success. Um, I would love to hear from you guys if you are doing that today. Just put yes in the chat. Okay, we got Rebecca said yes. We do, we do it all the time. Um, Peter said yes. And click-throughs. Great, Peter. Click-through is very, very important. This is why if you're doing your email... Um, if you're designing your email, you have to think, what is your main CTA that's in there? That's going to get people clicking through. Susan said, yes. I, I honestly think most of you guys are, if you are using email. Cool. Um, so click to open rate is a metric uh, that's been rising in importance for the, in the past few years. And all it is, is you divide the unique clicks by the unique opens. Um, <clears throat> yes, that's true. Uh, I, was, I was actually thinking about this and sorry, I'm reading a comment on the side. The, this, the CTOR is not going to be accurate, um, but we're gonna come up with a formula in VBOUT that's gonna be hopefully as close enough to giving you a data that's, uh, that's not too skewed or too inaccurate. All right, do you still have to worry about open rates? You know, as long as you bring in value, honestly, driving conversations, that's going to be really important. Um, personalize your emails, you know, ask your contacts for the experience, get them to click through the email to go somewhere else so you can kind of see the, if your emails are resonating. Because in my opinion, emails are, are just the first level of engagement. And if people are seeing um, a good quality content and they're liking your content, perhaps they read more to get access to the entire thing is going to be the next best metric to focus on. <clears throat> and this is where we can you know, deploy landing pages if you're using VBOUT to house your content, house your offer, or even house the rest of your email on. If you have you know, an email snippet, that's taking people to a landing page or maybe your blog. Don't just put your entire blog in the, inside the email. And honestly, we've seen people do this all the time. Also, don't just put a banner with that content inside your email because that's going to be completely ina uh, inaccurate in terms of how you're measuring engagement with it. <clears throat> yep, so in terms of the outcome, um, establishing trust, inviting conversations, Getting them to take action is going to be your next best uh, bet when it comes to your email plan. All right, so take any questions so far. We have one more section here for five minutes. So how are we going to measure email marketing and, and how we do it in VRoute today? Uh, any questions so far? We have... 
can ask him a question. Okay. I don't see an option to export the list. Um, okay, if you're talking about VBAT, we can definitely talk about that, Tim. We are um, looking into whatever missing filters. It could be done via the audience section. So you go to an audience and you build it and you say if the email client is, um, is an Apple or includes specific um, device, then you can put those in their own contact. Uh, we, we don't have the filter out yet, but we are uh, planning to release it within the update that we have for this patch. <clears throat> Audience builder, yes. Sorry, I'm reading through questions here. I'm looking at the Apple ad platform for the first time. Is it only for advertise and app store? Uh, honestly, I'm not sure how the Apple ad platform works. They have a huge ecosystem from you know, they're um, obviously their app store. They have Apple TV. They have the music, uh, the iTunes. Um, and they definitely have some other ad networks they integrate well with. So with that, I cannot really speak for the Apple ad platform. They surely have um, a big chunk of the revenue coming from there. All right, any other questions? No, I think. All right. Fine. All right, I'm sure some will come up. Um, all right, so how, how do we deploy things beyond email? Um, SMS, MMS is a great channel if you have the proper consent, guys. I literally joined uh, a webinar earlier today from a vendor I signed up to and they sent me tons of emails, but I'm too busy and I have my own filters that I couldn't see the emails, but they sent an SMS because they asked me for it upon sign up. Uh, and there's, they put, put a link to the webinar that they are launching in about 20 minutes. So it was an impromptu process and I really liked it. It drove that click through. And eventually when I landed there, building that first party cookie made an impact. So now each, using SMS clicks to web engagement uh, combined with email to determine this. So you can stack your engagement rates using audiences in VBout or other solutions to say if somebody opened an email and somebody clicked an SMS, you can use an and or or interchangeably here. Um, and even try to deploy browser push. Browser push is a little bit tricky because you might not know much about the, the contact. But in VBOT, we let you see that, let's say, uh, Tim at WSI uh, is, has an email uh, and a phone number and also opted into browser push. So if you're able to bridge this, you can do stacking of your engagement, and this will give you a little bit more accurate uh, information on, um, on your open rates. All right, so Peter says, how do you ask properly phone uh, for phone on forms. Um, so Peter, I think it's a matter of that GDPR, I'm just gonna call it GDPR compliance uh, prompt that people will have to check before they click next. So you can say things like by providing your email and your phone, uh, we will sending you from time to time some relevant SMS which you can opt out from, okay? You might need to add a clause on your terms of services. Uh, and when you're sending out the emails, you certainly must include to, to opt out, reply stop. We use Twilio, so Twilio handles when people reply stop, and that's an easy opt out immediately. Um, yeah, so if you are, or you can make your, your phone number optional and right there in the description of the phone, you can say, or the placeholder of the field called phone, you can say phone for future, for marketing, texting, or something like that. I'm not the best in coming up with those terms, uh, but make it very clear that you are going to be communicating via SMS, okay? Mm -hmm. And also, if you are directing people to your site, obviously we deploy things like pop-ups, uh, we set up our goal and KPIs, because we can do a lot more when we get them on the site, okay? We're even thinking about 
um, possi possibly creating an intermediary page when we detect this behavior that the person or the contact is not using an Apple, uh, I'm sorry, is using an Apple device by either not being able to track their IP, their email clients, or because they clocked in and open rate at the same time, maybe we can introduce an intermediary page there when they click it to ask them to confirm if they are in, in fact using um, an Apple uh, an Apple product. Um, so that uh, we haven't really figured it out, but what I'm trying to say is when you get them to click, you invite that conversation, you can do a lot more in terms of your tracking and your KPIs. Uh, this, these are other samples in terms of how VBOT displays it. We have the email engagements. We'll have to rework this. Uh, the open rates is uh, what we might open or add an additional metric here. We don't know what we're going to call it, um, but it might be its own percentage. That's just going to reflect what we estimate to be an accurate open rates. Um, your clicks, conversions, these will not change. They will remain the same. And the one thing that we have to figure out is um, any unsubscribes will be triggered or any other behavior in the email might be false, which we don't know yet about. And inside VBOT's automation, we can stack, you can see here the total opens across the board, email, SMS, and browser push. The total opens and clicks and conversions from all these three channels. And this is why I recommend you use all these channels um, combined together for best results. These are browser push analytics. So you can see who are the people that are clicking, uh, who opted into browser push. Uh, some of them might just have an IP address. Some of them might be contact record already. And you can see their clicks here uh, and how many sent. This is a, a more, much more accurate than, uh, or will not be impacted by the uh, update. <clears throat> Uh, and I think this is the, the site pop-ups um, and, and the analytics there. So you can see how many people came, how many of them were contacts already, and what kind of uh, conversions you've triggered through those pop-ups. All right, so this is it, guys. I would love to take any feedback um, or any questions before we do attendees intros. I think we have 34 people on the call, so that's about 30. Uh, before we, uh, we'll, we'll do intros if no one have any questions. Awesome. Maybe some will come up uh, with, with a few questions. I will stop right now the broadcast, George, because this, um, or the screen share, I'm sorry. asking about uh, that oh, i thought you were asking about the facebook uh, live no no you uh, can keep the facebook apologies I'm, i meant the screen share um all right so how do you ask properly we got that um thank you tim <clears throat> all right no additional questions so i'm gonna go ahead and call you by name no particular order guys uh just uh unmute yourself if you can show the camera that's great uh, tell me your company name. If you're looking for something specific, you have a 10 second pitch you want, you want to share with us, this is a great time to do it. Um, so I will go ahead and um, start with Abigail. Hello, Abigail. Abigail going once. Okay. Abigail might be, you are muted, by the way. You have to unmute yourself. All right, we have Abraham. Hey, Abraham, are you with us? Yeah, how are you? Good, yourself. Very good, very good. Yeah, um, I'm not a marketer, uh, and um, I'm very new to all of this. I'm using this for my startup company. Uh, I am a dentist, um, and, and hope to use this product for both my dental, dental business and my startup business. But yes, uh, I'm very new to it and there are parts of Reba that I'm struggling with, but your team and I'll shout out to Joseph who has been phenomenal help. Um, Thank you. I, I really look forward to his video calls 
because he really runs me through in such great detail that I get it really, really fast. Um, I wish he, I could talk to him every day, but I know that's not reality. Um, however, I am learning more and more about Rebout in this email thing. Uh, you've got me interested again. I've got to figure out how to segment my audience further and, and use it to my advantage. But, but thank you very much. And thank I think you. you've got a phenomenal product. Thank you, Eva. I appreciate it. And welcome to Vivo. Um, we have Brenda Nor Norkoski. Hello, Brenda. Hello, I'm here. We're just doing quick intros uh, and any pitch you want, you want to share with us, whether you're looking for an opportunity, you're launching a startup, whatever. Actually, I have a um, digital marketing uh, um, franchise with WSI. And so I'm just, I have a few clients that do email marketing on their own with blogs that we help them write. So I was just trying to get information about how to help them with these changes. Got it. Was this helpful, Brenda, to give you like a deeper dive into how these changes will impact? And it was because they want to know more of the detail as well. So. All right. Yeah. Well, great. Uh, Brenda, we'll hope to see you on Vbout as well. Um, I think so. Yes. Cool, cool. We have Chris. Hello, Chris. Chris going once. All right. We have um, David. Hello, David. David Labovich. Yeah, hey, uh, Richard. Hey, it's uh, David. I'm uh, I am an IC with uh, WSI. I was just uh, I already use Zbout. Um, I work with with Elsa and, and Mo and some stuff. I'm just trying to get a refresh on some of the new updates with uh, the Apple privacy stuff. Yes, it's a huge conversation. Some people are calling it the doomsday of email, which I think is silly. Um, uh, conversions and click-throughs are going to be the way to go. Um, thanks for joining us, David. Yeah. All right, I got live. I live by faith. Sorry, I don't have a name. I live by, by faith, going once, twice. All right, I have JS. I don't have a name as well. Come on, you guys shy. <laughs> it's okay. Um, all right, we have Gene. Gene, are you with us? Yes, hi, Richard. Um, big fan hey, of Gene. yours and, and VBOT. I'm a, also a WSI franchisee. We met a couple of times. Yes. And so I always find your um, talks to be informative. So I really just wanted to get on and listen because I don't often get a chance to actually consume. So I'm just, I'm just a monitor today. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you and welcome, uh, Jean. I right, have Laura Lee Griffin. Hey, Laura. Hi, um, this is Laura Lee. I'm from New York. I work for American Express. I'm a um, I'm working on my master's degree in marketing, and this is the first time I'm tuning in um, to your channel. So I just was listening and I'm learning, and um, I want to see and glean what I can can learn from you. Thank you, Laura. We do this every month, and we have ongoing events. So we'd love to have you on upcoming events as well, where we discuss different topics. Today was a specific case because this is like an urgent update for the marketing world to mm -hmm. understand how this will impact metrics and automations and a whole bunch of things it's a big talk in the in the marketing um right it is and a quick question are you going to send us a recording of this or no yes we will we will that have, would be great yeah just give us maybe a day or two uh we right will that's kind fine of do the video uploads and and clean up the chat and we'll, we'll send it back okay thank you because it would be interesting to um like re-listen to it no and this way, if all. I have any questions, um, how do I get in touch with you? Oh, uh, you can reply back to the email that will be sent. We have okay, a live chat terrific. that's available. Yeah, we invite conversations either way. Okay, excellent. Maybe you'll even come and present at Amex for us virtually. Yeah, I would love to. I do this all the time. And um, I'll leave my information in the chat. So this way we can, um, we can communicate. Okay, thank you. I'll look for it. Pleasure. <clears throat> George, if you don't mind putting a link to our Facebook group uh, as well, for those of you who want to 
get ongoing content updates, yeah. event invites. Um, if in case the emails are not making it your way, we will have you on Facebook. George will put it in the chat. And I'll, sure. I'm sharing my email with you right now, Laura. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right, we have Peter Burson. Hey, Peter, thanks for all the participation today and always. Yeah. No, thanks, Richard. Um, Viva is a great product and uh, like the technology. Um, yep, yeah, WSI marketing consultant, like some of the other folks just listening in because I'm an Apple uh, user and uh, trying to figure out the Apple privacy world better. Uh, th yeah, quick question. This is only affecting iOS or is it iOS and the mail client on their desktop? Uh, well, they said that um, it's iOS 15, iPad OS 15. Mac OS Monterey and Watch OS. So I believe if you're using, oh, yeah, yeah they're, they're native. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll, you, can you detect, uh, you can detect differences or if it's iOS versus the you know, Monterey? Um, I have to check. Sometimes we can, but not always, depending on different factors so um because we rely on our signals back from the esp that we partner with uh, I'll, I'll have to check but mm. I, I think we can determine um the email client for the most part so um i would just segment them into ios and non-ios yep awesome well thanks peter we have rebecca marsh hey rebecca Hey there, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> I am the uh, Marketing and Communications Director for Merchants Bank of Indiana. Um, we're a financial institution, obviously based here in, in Carmel, Indiana, which is a little bit north of Indianapolis. And I've never heard of Viva before. I actually kind of fell upon this um, on, on LinkedIn. Um, a, a friend of mine who I also uh, participate in a lot of marketing director forums, uh, Eric Cook from WSI <laughs> notification awesome. came up that he was attending. So, um, and I had recently sent him um, a, a message uh, from one of the uh, mail providers that I use um, talking about this and asking him, hey, what do you know about this? And so I saw he was uh, registering to come to this. So that's why I'm here. So, awesome. <laughs> anyway. Welcome. Um, and hopefully we gave you some insights on how, what it is and how it's going to impact your email marketing. Uh, you, you're running email marketing, I'm assuming, correct? We are. It's, yeah. um, we use it more for our public relations efforts, to be honest with you. So um, we are quite a niche bank. We're um, a commercial real estate uh, mortgage financial institution. Um, and so we do a, a lot of large projects nationally um, and finance a lot of um, low income to moderate income um, properties. And so um, there's always a great story there. So we do a, a, a large, you know, public relations push. And so, um, you know, we use email marketing in combination with, you know, sharing on social, um, sharing with uh, media outlets and things like that. So yes, we do. Awesome. Well, Rebecca, thank you. Hopefully we'll see you guys on VBout. I'll put in my email as well. If you like to connect and set up a demo for your team, I would love to help you. Okay, great. Awesome. All right, and we have, um, sorry, the order here gets shuffled. We have Steve Solar. Hey, Steve. Steve going once. Uh, hey, Richard, uh, yeah, he's there, but he mentioned- oh, He can't unmute, okay, uh, sorry, Steve. Uh, we have yeah. Stevie. Steve with us. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, welcome Stevie. Hi, good morning. Um, I'm actually from Australia. So um, I've, wow. been, <laughs> I've been meaning to get on this, on your um, monthly thing for a um, couple of months. And yesterday I put it in my diary. So <laughs> well, no, the other day I put the um, time slot in my diary, but um, I forgot that you guys are, um, well, Australia's uh, a few hours ahead, so I was up early yesterday morning to make sure I'd watch it, but 
It's 8 a.m. Um, now, right? Or something like that? Yeah, now it's 6 past 8, correct. Okay. Anyway, okay. I love I love VVAT. I don't know how to use it yet, but I know I love it. So good work. <laughs> I love what it can do. I just need to implement all the um, the building blocks to um, for our e-commerce businesses because a similar story to a lady from last month where she was... Um, let's say taken for a ride by some digital marketers. And we had a similar situation. We got taken for a ride, fleeced our marketing account. So the money left over, we bought VVAP. So um, to get on, get on board, understand it properly before we point another marketing agency. So we understand how it all works. So, yeah. Awesome. So um, well, welcome. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, it is exciting. And um, yeah, we're just trying to implement it in our social marketing um, e-commerce businesses and trying to configure the 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 push notifications the um, yeah all that all automation which um, yeah we're trying to learn so and also thank you for the um, for the initial um, promo code for that your uh, masterclass I think yeah, that's really. great and by the way there we have certification for Viva to learn how to use it we have daily training sessions that run automatically. Um, George, do you mind sharing with, uh, with Stevie the link? Or maybe I'll just put it in the chat right now. Um, would love to have you on one of our daily training. They are pre-recorded, but we have an hour and 40 minutes. It's an express onboarding that shares everything you need to know and getting the best out of your account. Uh, so I'll, I'll put in that in the, in the chat and hopefully we'll see you on one of those events. Okay? No, definitely. I'll be on the baby training. I definitely need baby training. Yep. Perfect. Well, welcome, Stevie. Thanks for joining us so early. Um, welcome. Thank you. All right, we have Yolanda Douglas. Hello, Yolanda. For once. Can you hear me? Yes, now you're, uh, you're on. Great. Um, yeah, I'm a marketer uh, in Toronto um, with the Renew Strategy. Um, and I Sorry, the voice is pretty far. I, I really apologize, y Yolanda. Oh, can you hear me better or no? Um, no, okay. <laughs> okay, now, now it's a little bit better. You can go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just saying I, I'm a marketer in Toronto. I was, I actually did purchase uh, Weave Out and, and I'm still exploring it quite a bit and um, enjoying myself while doing so. Um, I, when I saw this, I actually hadn't heard very much about this. I heard about the um, third party tracking with Apple, but not this. Um, and so I, I'm really, really happy that I was able to jump on this call and, you know, glean a lot of the information um, and take that to my group. So I appreciate that. Thank you again, Richard. No, thank you. Sorry, we, we heard part of what you said, but uh, just to, for those of you who haven't heard, Yolanda is from Canada and, um, you know, she jumped on the, on, on the session to learn more about the email. Uh, sorry, Yolanda, I'm, I'm redoing it because we couldn't really hear, hear you well. Uh, Richard, uh, sorry, we have a question from Salim, from Mirella. Uh, she's asking if we have any limits in the push notifications. But no limits. No, no, no limits. limits. Most people don't have millions and millions of them. Um, but uh, in terms of, uh, but in terms of count or in terms of what devices we can deliver it over. And I'm not seeing the question. Sorry, George. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's. Uh... That's on Facebook. On Facebook. Huh, okay. That's yeah, you can. You can give me the answer once that response makes it. There's like a ten seconds delay, I think. Um, all right. I yeah. I don't know if I missed anybody in the meantime before we get a Peter Caller Collender. Sorry, Peter Collender. I think I missed you. Mona? Okay. Hi. Um, Can you hear me? Yes, now you're on. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so I, I'm so sorry. I'm just, I came in late. So I'm not sure exactly. I think you're promoting some kind of um, marketing. Uh, we were talking about the email privacy from Apple and what we're doing right now is just quick introductions. Tell us about yourself, your company, and if you want to pitch anything 
You have 10 seconds, just quick introductions. Oh, um. okay. <laughs> well, hi everyone. My name is Mona Thorpe. My company is Success 411 by Mona Thorpe. And um, I'm a law of attraction coach and uh, I help people uh, discover what their hidden barriers are that stand in the way of their success goals through a six step process that I developed. Awesome, share the information, uh, Mona, in the chat. I'm pretty sure some people might be interested and welcome. Thank you. We'll be sharing some more details on this uh, and the video and everything else. Uh, so if you've missed it, you can get a replay on that, okay? Okay, thanks. Perfect. All right, uh, quick shout out to Elsa. Cannot speak right now. She has issues with the mic, but uh, she helps prepare this presentation. And also George, who helps moderate, put the content together. Uh, George, uh, you can go ahead. Sure. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, so hello again, everyone, guys. Um, my name is George. I'm the marketing manager of Vbout. I'm really happy to be part of these monthly sessions, sharing new content and providing you with uh, new ideas. I hope you found the session helpful. And for those who missed it or came late, we will share with you the recording and the presentation. So nice to meet you, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you in the next uh, meetup. Thank you, George. Um, and I think this concludes the call for today, everyone. I really want to thank you for taking the time to join us, whether it is early in the morning from Australia or late in the evening, Eastern time, um, or maybe midway uh, or in Europe or Middle East. Uh, thank you. It, it means a lot your particip participation to keep these events going. We will be sharing the content with you. Feel free to repurpose it for your own community and feel free to recycle it. Feel free to use it for your own um, learning process. We will be having another session next month, the second Wednesday, which you will get an invite for. We'd love to have you again. And other than that, enjoy the month of September um, and we'll see you again next month. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.